I have a particular love for uh, Transformers. <laughs> Hello, welcome again to Modelers with their models. I'm BJ, and this is Michael. Hi. Hello, yeah. welcome again. Yeah, keep having me back. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> Your stuff is really interesting. Yeah. So, for anyone who hasn't heard or seen your work before, hmm. you do a lot of toy modifications and yeah. toy art. And, and uh, yeah, customizing toys. Uh, yes. toy, toys are my jam, I'm a toy collector. Right. Um, and uh, I have a particular love for uh, Transformers. Transformers. Um, yeah, that was uh, my jam back uh, when I was a boy. I was a, I, mm -hmm. I had a childhood in the 1980s. Yes. And uh, yeah, I used to love the watching the cartoons in the morning and uh, collecting the toys. And yes. uh, I still collect the toys now. There we go. Well, we have what's three big ones. Yes. And two little ones. That's right. Now so the, the two little ones actually came with uh, some of the original toys of the big ones. So um, uh, what we have here are uh, Grimlock and Slug and Snarl. Right. Um, they were original uh, Transformers back in the 1980s. Uh, they came out originally in 1986. And uh, these are modern versions of um, those characters. Right. So um, the these aren't vintage. These are these are modern representations of those characters. Okay. Um, but repainted in a different um, colour scheme um, that is more representative of um, what's known as Generation 2. Oh, um, right. So Transformers um, was uh, when it was uh, originally came out in 1984. Mm-hmm and uh, ran for many years. There were lots of toys that came out. Mm -hmm. uh, seasons of the um, t television show, the four or five seasons of the television show. I remember show, watching some of that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then um, they, uh, they were dwindling in popularity a little bit. Um, and so um, in an attempt to, to revive the brand mm -hmm. um, in the early 1990s, they created what was called um, Transformers Generation 2. Right. Um, and there was comic book series uh, involved and, uh, 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 and various media and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of the toy lines um, from Generation 2, um, they, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them were just um, repaints of the, the original toys from the 1980s. Right. They just repainted them in um, uh, bright colours, uh, sometimes quite garish colours. Um, so the shape itself didn't change or did, no, did no, they change? No, oh, they no, didn't no, change no. in... Not really, oh, not right. really. There were some I innovations because mm -hmm. obviously, um, uh, you know, technology and, and, and uh, toys had advanced to a degree at right. that point. So there were some changes here and there. Um, but um, a lot of them were just straight up and down repaints of uh, the old toys. Mm -hmm. And there were representations of um, Grimlock Slug and Snarl right. in um, G2, yes. um, but they were in different colours. So the original toys that are underneath all of this paint yes. are their G1 colours, right. and I've repainted them in uh, their G2 colours, Generation right. 2 colours. Okay. Um, now these yeah. figures seem quite big they to are. me. Yeah. So they're, what are these, like 20 centimeters to 30 Ooh, centimeters right that yeah, sort of they're, look they're, they're about 20 20 plus centimeters about 20 then, and then the little 80. ones the little ones are probably about five centimeters very small yeah and that's because yeah. there were small transformers around there were there were right. all kinds of uh um uh, all kinds of sizes. Uh, Transformers, we, we in, in in collecting circles, we laugh about scale quite a lot right. uh, because there were bigger robots and smaller robots and that yes. kind of thing. But um, scale is just not a thing in Transformers. Right. Um, I mean, it is and it should be, but it's really really loose. Right. So you can get. Um, uh, Transformers even back in the day, mm. you'd get a car that was this big and yes. then a car that was this big. Right. And uh -huh, technically okay. they're like the same size car, but yes. uh, yeah. But okay. they transform and they're a different size robot, you right. know. Right, uh, okay. So, yeah, fair yeah. enough. And, and also, you know, with toy releases and that kind of thing, you've got to yes. look at price point. Right. So um, some, some toys are, are, are bigger and more complex. Yes. And some toys are smaller and, and, and maybe more for younger, yes. um, younger people. Oh, I can understand that. It's a bit like Matchbox. So mm. Matchbox was 
making the car fit in a generic size box. Mm. So they were out of scale too. Yeah. Yeah. Very, yeah. very similar. Okay. So Understood. various price points. These particular toys are from um, just the last uh, five years or so. Okay. Um, and uh, so they've got a lot of modern articulation to them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they all transform even despite the customized colors that I've done them in. Mm -hmm. um, and they're... Um, uh, yeah, they transform into dinosaurs. Um, if you're not familiar with the character, um, Grimlock's a, um, a T Rex. Right. Slug is a Triceratops. Yes. Snarl is a Stegosaurus. Right. And these are the three um, of the. There's um, traditionally in Generation 1, there was five Dinobots. Right. Three of them were re released in Generation 2. And right. in these colours, the, the blue, oh, the right. green, and the red. That okay. You see here. So when you come to customizing them, yeah. how do you go about doing that? Do you just paint them as they are in one piece or do you dismantle them? Absolutely dismantle them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, in the cases of these ones, um, uh, as a for instance, you can see there's uh, a lot of silver and blue um, right. on, uh, on, on Grimlock. Right. Um, whereas on the original G2 toy, it was just blue. Right, like the the, the arms. Oh, don't worry about him. He's going to keep falling over. <laughs> yes. The arms were just purely blue. Right. So in this case, I've yes. dismantled it right. as much as possible. Um, so there's lots of screws, uh, lots of pins, um, uh, various um, different ways of uh, a toy like this staying together. Right. Um, obviously, it has to conform to pretty strict safety standards. Yes. Um, to um, be able to be marketed and sold. Um, all over the place. Yes. So take it apart and um, and then there's a lot of masking um, that needs to be done, especially for these ones where I've um, sort of not, uh, I've, I've highlighted a lot of the detail in them mm. by not painting the entire piece blue, like the entire arm or the entire leg uh, completely blue. Right. Um, I've uh, sort of um, picked out bits that I've kept as silver and, and some bits that I've uh, painted blue. Okay. Um, just to give it a slightly different look, so it's 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 I guess kind of a hybrid between the silver of the G1 mm -hmm. and the blue of the G2. Right. But um, yeah, but I've added uh, like the Generation Two symbol uh, as for instance on the chest oh, there. Oh, so it's different. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's slightly different. Right. Um, yeah, so they're, they're, it is um, quite um, complex. That these toys aren't meant to be taken apart. Mm. Um, Obviously, they're meant to stay together. Yes. Now, you don't want um, screws and pins and things flying off a, a child's toy. And basically, they are toys. I'm um, unashamedly a, 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 <laughs> an adult toy collector. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. So, is there any special prep you do? So, once you once you pull it apart... Absolutely. And then, you make sure you don't lose any bits. Yes. And then, there's... Is it existing paint on them, or are they coloured plastic? They are typically moulded in coloured plastic. Right. Um when they're put together there is some um, paint applications although i have noticed um, in uh, you know recent years um, that that is uh, in the toy manufacturing process i think that that's uh, that adds to the expense of the toy yes it's, it's much cheaper for toy companies to mold things in colored plastic rather than um, adding paint applications to a toy after the fact. Right. So there are paint applications on this for sure. Yes. But um, uh, that is getting rarer, mm. basically. Um, so yeah, th there's some colours I've kept, some I've enhanced by, um, like some of the golds on this. Yes. Um, I've enhanced by painting a gold piece more gold, if that makes sense. It's like uh, the, go the gold uh, plastic is... Um, it's, it's maybe a, a dull. little duller, right. maybe a little browner. Yes. So I've painted those parts as well so that they um, just pop a little bit more. Yes. Um, yeah, so in terms of the process, um, after I've disassembled it, I clean everything. Um, With you know, detergent or any special chemicals? Um, I use um, is uh, isopropyl alcohol oh, quite okay, a lot. Yes, um, yes. It evaporates quite quickly and it, it'll cut through any oils and chemicals that are used in the manufacturing process yes. so that paint will stick better to it. Yes. Um, can use detergent and water as long as you rinse off the detergent because mm -hmm. soap will stop um, uh, paint sticking to yes, uh, the, a model yes, as well. So, yes. Yeah, um, all, all of those kind of things. I do give them a really good thorough clean uh, before I mask them up and, um, and, and do the paintwork. Right. Wow, nice finish. And then yeah. you'll work with each individual piece, which, yeah. you know, as, as a traditional plastics builder, that, that is easier mm -hmm. to, to handle. Mm. And then you just pop it together. Do you put any clear coats on to make it more durable? 
Not really. Sometimes no? there's priming involved. Yes. Um, with Transformers, the difference between um, this kind of toy and a lot of, kind of other kinds of toys and even models mm. is um, if you're doing a model car, for instance, yes. uh, like, uh, like a kit, yes. a kit car yes. or a kit plane or something like that, yes. you put it together, you paint it, however you go about doing it, mm. and you put it on display. These toys are actually functional mm. toys that have been engineered to uh, not just be played with, but to have different forms. Mm. So these fully transform into other things. Uh, in this instance, they go mm. from robot mode to dinosaur mode. Yes. So there's a lot of movement involved. Yes. Um, friction involved. Yes. Um, there's um, uh, bits and pieces that will potentially rub together. Mm. So that's something that has to be taken into account when you're painting one of these. Yes. Um, and in fact, when I reassemble it, I'm always uh, get that little bit of a shock of, of, okay, when I'm transforming it, this bit is rubbing against this bit and scratching mm. off all the paint. Yes. So there's often a lot of um, cutting and sanding involved. Right. So that um, when you're adding an extra layer of paint, um, it's not just going to shear off. Get the tolerance. Off. Yeah, yeah. Right. You okay. have to get. You have to look at tolerances and that kind of thing. Yes. We don't typically have to look at that quite as much, or to, to quite the same degree. No. And it isn't uncommon when I'm doing a transformer, mm. uh, customizing a transformer, to take it all apart, mm. prep it, paint it, put it all back together again. Yes. And then have to take it apart again to fix things. Yes. Um, that I didn't realize were gonna be a problem in the first instance. So it does mean that there is a, a fair bit of work. I guess, um, I guess that's a similarity with Gundam builders too that paint because mm -hmm. they need to consider, you know, tolerances and movement that's as well. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so talking about that, the paint you select, yep. do, do you pick acrylic lacquers like the I, Gundam builders do? I do, I do particularly go for lacquers. Yeah. Right, because, yeah. they're, because they're more durable? More durable, they're stronger, tougher, yes. um, more hard wearing. Um, right. They'll, uh, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, typically ones that I can run through the airbrush. So I do lot, use a lot of um, scale modelers supply SMS right. um, lacquers. Yes. Because uh, they're airbrush ready. Yes. And they come in some really vivid, vibrant colours. Um, and even on some of these guys, I've actually used some of the pearls and that kind of thing to get that kind of metallic type look. Well, the silver on this one looks like a mirror finish. Is that the mirror? Some of that is chrome. Um, it is chrome finish. It would be the SMS chrome. Okay, yes. Um, I've got a, a few tiny areas that I do need to touch up on uh, one or two of these. Yes. Um, and even the teeth on Grimlock, if you um, go to the back there, you can see his, uh, his, his, his dino oh, yes, dinosaur yes. head. I'll flip that out. Um, you can see his dinosaur head there. Right. And uh, yeah, his teeth there are, um, are, are, are chrome too. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, just yeah, a, yeah, a slightly different, uh, different kind of finish. Yes. Yeah, very interesting. And that's to um, to homage the um, the original toys. Had, right. Had they were all chrome, chrome were they? Chrome plated pieces. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, what about these other pieces? Mm. So they all came apart the same sort of way. Exactly. It's same process with right. um, all three of these. Um, picked out the colours that were going to um, not only mimic the original toys, but um, also um, were going to. Um, uh, you know, have that G2 aesthetic of mm. the of the brighter colours, blue, green, and, and red. In these right. cases, um, that'd be a lot of work. I can, I can see how there would is, be a lot of masking does, involved. A lot of masking involved with these, and it does take time. And I use a mixture of um, tape. Mask, mm -hmm. Masking tape, yes. um, hobby grade masking tape, not the kind of masking tape that you would get uh, from uh, Bunnings or something that you do when you're so painting your the house. Low-tech stuff. Yeah, you need to use something that's um, good quality. Yes. Um, I, I typically use Tamiya tape, yes. but I also um, mask uh, a lot with um, liquid mask. I do. So, yeah, so right. I use the Humbrol mask oil. Yes, I use yes. the um, Vallejo liquid mask as well. Yes. Um, to um, you know, get into some of the, the crevices and the lines and mm. that kind of thing, and um, uh, yeah, makes it wow. uh, makes it a fun process. Um, these two little figures down the front, I should uh, probably mention. Yes. Um, now these two little guys uh, came. Uh, the wheelie came with Grimlock. Yes. And the little Daniel came with um, Slug. Right. Um, as little extras. 
And neither of those characters had a Generation 2 counterpart. Right. So I didn't have... Um, oops, sorry, Mike. I didn't have a, a thing whereby um, a, a paint scheme to go, to go by. Right. A Generation 2 paint scheme that I could rely on um, historically because they right. didn't exist in Generation 2. Right. So what I did was um, I went back into my Transformers lore mm -hmm. and, and tried to work out what to do. Um, there was an unreleased prototype of G2 Grimlock. They were, when they were tossing up, when they were first doing Generation 2, what kind of colours they were going to do them in. Right. And they um, designed a blue one which mm -hmm. was the one that ended up getting released. But one of the prototypes or the um, uh, uh, concepts that they worked on that they never ended up releasing was a uh, what was called a tiger stripe. Oh, um, so, that, that camo. Yeah, yeah. Right. The, um, the, the, the yellow... And the um, blue. The, yeah, I'll hold that up to the camera there. Yep. The, um, the yellow with the blue stripes, the blue chest, and the white head. Mm. So I thought, okay, well, Wheelie came with Grimlock. I'll do him in the colours of the um, unreleased prototype of Grimlock. Yeah, nice. Um, similarly, Daniel didn't have a, um, a G2 counterpart, so I said, oh, how, how can I do that? What can I do for that? Mm. Um, and in the 1986 movie, there were the Junkion characters that were um, uh, typically orange and brown. Yeah, right. um, various shades of orange and brown. And um, this character played a role um, in that scene amongst those characters. Right. So I thought, well, for G2, I'm yes. going to um, do orange and brown with uh, a few little uh, blue highlights. Yeah, nice. So G2 Daniel, even though he didn't exist, he's, he, he's been like reimagined here. Yeah, a little bit like a junkie on. So there's a little bit um, for Transformers fans to sort of um, uh, to keep their interest, I guess. Um, That's really cool. Outside of just the, the toys themselves. Very nice. Well, I can see, look, there's three big ones. They would have taken yeah. ages. There's That's a lot right. of work yeah, involved yeah. here. There are two more um, right. that are coming. Okay. Um, that are um, this size. So mm -hmm. they fit uh, scale-wise with these toys. Right. Um, and they were never released. It was uh, Sludge and Swoop. They were never released in um, Generation 2. Mm -hmm. But, again, like uh, the Tiger Stripe, there's concept art out there. Right. Um, where that the toy was never actually released, but someone designed and mocked up a concept of what they could look like. Right. So those two toys are going to be, in, in the next few months, it's one of the projects that I've got lined up, is actually um, doing them in uh, the G2 colours. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So I'll have a, a large team. That is yeah. so good. So good. It's always very interesting to, to get the, uh, the background and, mm. and to see how works get completed yeah all right thanks again michael no worries BJ. thanks for joining us thanks for having me you're welcome so that was another episode of models with their models now if you'd like to join us with this series please put a comment down below if you like this particular episode give us a like uh if you've got any questions comments below again and if you want to see more content like this consider subscribing so thanks for joining us again mm -hmm.